ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد My brothers and sisters from those affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to some of his prophets was the ability to interpret the dreams and from those prophets is the noble prophet Yusuf alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him wa kadhalika yajtabika rabbuka yu'allimuka من تعويل الاحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك الله سبحانه وتعالى informed the prophet yusuf thus will your lord choose you meaning that he will appoint you and choose you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and other matters and perfect his favor upon you just as he perfected it or just as he has perfected it upon the family of yaqub so from those affairs and from those specific matters that was given to the noble prophet yusuf alayhi salam was the ability to interpret dreams so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him wa yu'allimuka min ta'wil al-ahadith that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this ta'wil al-ahadith meaning that allah will give you this in- this ability to interpret dreams meaning that you'll be able to look into the dreams of the people and you'll be able to explain what they mean the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu he mentioned that when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was upon his final illness before he died sallallahu alayhi wasallam that allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam drew back the curtain between himself and the people and they were all lined up in rows behind the noble companion Abu Bakr as-Siddiq the best of them so he said to them oh people there is nothing that has been left or there is nothing that ha- that is now left of the glad tidings of prophethood except a good dream a good dream that a muslim sees himself or that is seen for him And likewise in the muwatta in the muwatta of Imam Malik ibn Anas rahimahullahu ta'ala there is an authentic chain of narration back to Urwa bin Zubair the Ib- the Urwa bin Zubair he used to recite the ayah wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said lahumul bushra fil hayati dunya wa fil akhira that for them there is a glad tidings or that they are glad tidings in the life of this world and in the hereafter so he said urwa that this glad tiding meaning in this world is a good dream or a pious dream that a person sees or that is seen for him meaning seen about him it also occurs from abu huraira radiyallahu anhu That he said that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when the end of time approaches the dreams of the believer 
will hardly fail to take place. And the dream of the believer is one forty-sixth part of prophethood. And the most truthful in dreams from you is the most truthful in speech from you. And in a narration in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whatever belongs to prophethood and whatever belongs, meaning of the dream, since the dreams are one forty-sixth of prophethood, the, belie- the dream of the believer and whatever belongs to prophethood can never be false. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when the end of time approaches, meaning that this is before the hour when the tribulations and the fitna become widespread and the religion, it becomes gharib, ghurbatul din, that there is a strangeness with regard to the religion itself due to the few number of people that are practicing it. Practicing it. And the people will be in great need of Bushra, of glad tidings from their Lord. So in that situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send these dreams to the righteous and to the pious and to the believers to settle their hearts and to settle their souls. So the hearts of the believers are at ease. And for this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the dreams of the believers will hardly fail to come true. As for the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the dream of the believer is one forty-sixth of prophethood. Then the ulama, ahlul ilm, some of them have mentioned the meaning of this. And they have said that if one looks at the period of time within which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation, it was 23 years. And 23 of those years, half of a year out of those 23, half of one year out of those 23, consisted of dreams that the Prophet ﷺ had. And those dreams that the Prophet ﷺ would have, they were dreams of revelation. Therefore the dreams that they constituted one forty-sixth of the prophethood, of revelation that was sent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said that when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam initially received revelation, then that revelation came by way of truthful dreams that he used to have in the night time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not see a dream Except that it would come true just like the bright morning light it breaks in the morning. It would be a true dream of the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. And when the Prophet ﷺ said that the most truthful of you in dreams is the most truthful of you in speech, then this gives us or sends to us a message of the importance of a sidq of being truthful. Because those dreams that are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of time, that are given to the, that are, that are revealed or, or, or given to the rightful, to, to the righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those dreams that the rightful servant has from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are dreams that are given to the truthful people. To those who have sidq, they are siddiqeen. And it shows us the importance of being truthful, my brothers and sisters. Truthful with regard to the kalima la ilaha illallah. Truthful with regard to the revelation that was sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa by way of the Quran and the sunnah. Truthful by way of our speech and our actions. Truthfulness in opposition to hypocrisy. That a person says something upon the tongue and he has something contrary to that in his heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that was narrated from Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu 
that has been collected by Imam At-Tirmidhi in his Sunan. That he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the dream is of three types. The dream that is truthful. And secondly, the dream where the soul of the man speaks to itself. And the third is the dream in which the shaitan, he frightens and distresses a person. So those are the three types of dreams. So in this hadith, there is a clarification from Allah's Messenger wasallam that not everything that you see in your dream is a righteous sighting or a righteous vision. Just because you see something in your dream, you don't consider it automatically now to be from Allah and some sort of revelation upon you because revelation has ceased, the wahi has stopped. So these dreams or these visions that you see, it is not always the case that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it is haqq or it is the truth. Rather, that a person may see something in his dream that frightens him, annoys him, or disturbs him. Those dreams that sadden and distress and frighten a person and frighten the believer, then those are from shaitan. And a person will have this even in the daytime. For example, that his soul whispers to him. Or that he has a dream, a daydream as you call it in the day, that frightens him. So these thoughts and these things that he has, not only happens to him when he's awake, but it also happens to him when he's asleep. Like shaitan nudging you when you're awake. And commanding you to commit sin. And encouraging you to look at things that you shouldn't look at. And listen to things that you shouldn't listen to. Then likewise in the dream, shaitan can come also. And frighten you and distress you and misguide you. So shaitan, that dream that comes from shaitan, it must be sought refuge from. And also likewise in the day that you may talk to yourself. Then likewise in the dream, a person, his soul may talk to him. So the dreams are of three types. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in that which has been narrated from Jabir radiallahu anhu that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that if one of you sees a dream that causes him some sort of distress and he dislikes it then let him spit over his left side three times meaning blow lightly as if you're spitting over your left side thrice and that you seek refuge in Allah three times. And if you were sleeping on one side, then change your side and turn to the other side. Because all of that, my brothers and sisters, it repels the frightening dream that you've had. Likewise, it has been reported in a hadith that has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari from Abu Huraira that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, that if one of you sees in a dream that which distresses him and he does not like, then let him stand up and pray. And let him not tell that, tell what he has seen. Let him not inform the people of that. So this is the sunnah with regard to awful dreams that you have or those distressing dreams that you have. That you seek refuge in Allah. That you spit over your left shoulder or to the left side, that you change yourself in the bed from one position to another position, and that you get up and you pray, and that you do not inform the people with regard to that affair. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. As for dream interpretation, my brothers and sisters, then that is a noble science that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singled out certain of, the, of His prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to mankind. Allah gave them the ability to interpret dreams. 
And likewise, such as Yusuf alayhi salam as we mentioned, and even our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, that when the people used to come to him and inform the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam of their dreams, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would inform them of the interpretation of those dreams. And likewise from the Sahaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave some of them ability, like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and also Abu Huraira, and also Ibn Umar, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability to interpret the dreams. Likewise from the Tabi'een, Muhammad bin Sirin, and other than them, from the great scholars and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who were given the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the ability to interpret dreams. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he guided us to the fact that whether you have a dream, whether it be good or bad, that you don't go and declare that and announce that to the people. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. Of course, if it's bad, then it's been bab awla that you don't mention it. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that if one of you sees a dream in which he is disturbed, he is distressed, then let him stand up and pray and not narrate that to the people. Then with regard to a good dream, then likewise, the Prophet ﷺ specified to whom the good dream should be narrated. Abu Razin al-Uqayli radiallahu anhu said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, let not one of you narrate his dream, meaning his good dream. A dream that is beloved to him, he saw something that pleased him in his dream. Then let him not narrate that except to the one whom you love. So even when you have a good dream, you narrate it to those who are beloved to you. Not that you go and broadcast it on Twitter and you go and tell the whole dunya. Rather, narrate it to, the, to those whom are beloved to you. Or as the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith collected by Abu Dawood, or to the one who has insight with regard to the dreams, the interpretation of them. The one who has insight. And from the benefits of that, my brothers and sisters, is that you should not narrate a bad dream or that which will distress your friends. Because if you have a bad dream, a dream that has distressed you, and then you go and tell it to someone and you inform and you narrate it to someone that you love, then you will distress them also. This is why the Prophet ﷺ gave us those pointers and those directions on what to do when you have a bad dream. When you have that dream that causes you grief. But by informing the people, informing even the one that you love, you will distress them. So there's a wisdom in not doing so. And likewise, there is that which some of the people have fallen into with regard to misunderstanding the dreams and how to deal with dreams. And we'll mention just some of them here. From the errors that the people they make is that they lie. They lie about a dream. They will claim that they've had such and such a dream but in reality they never had that dream at all. But they will convey that to the people, maybe to their beloved ones or to their friends, believing that it will raise their hopes. But it is not allowed to lie with regard to one's dream. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he said, that Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, that whomsoever claims to have seen a dream that he did not really see, will be ordered to make a nut between two barley grains which he will not be able to do. And whomsoever eavesdrops on the conversation of another who doesn't want him to listen to what they're talking about, then, then molten lead will be poured into his ear. And the one who makes an image, makes pictures, then on Yawm al it will be said to him, put soul, put a soul into that which you have created. Meaning, that image that you have made, that picture that you have made, Sheikh Al-Fawzan mentions this, applies to photography. Sheikh Ibn Baz said that I fear it applies to photography. Sheikh Muqbil said it, it, it applies to photography. Imam An-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala, many centuries ago, it said it applies to that which is two-dimensional, three-dimensional, from humans and animals. 
They will be asked to put a soul into it and they will not be able to do so. Then Allah will drag them and throw them into the hellfire. The hadith collected by Imam al-Bukhari. From those errors also, the second one, that many of the juhal and many of the ignorant people from the Sufiya, from the Sufis and the grave worshippers and other than them, from those who indulge in superstitious beliefs and folklore, that you'll find them with regard to their ru'ya, or with regard to what they see in their dreams, that they will derive Sharia rulings from it that contradicts the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So they will end up making halal what is haram, and making haram what is halal. Or they will claim that the messengers commanded them to do something that they haven't been commanded to do. Like make tawaf around the grave, and make tawaf or make sajda at the grave of a dead person. So they will say that in a dream the Prophet ﷺ told me to make dhikr and repeat Allah or Allahu 10,000 times. Those types of dreams have no basis in accepting them. Rather those dreams are from shaitan. They are not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they contradict the Quran and the sunnah. From those mistakes that the people make is that not every dream that the, or not everyone that sees the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his dream, that he has really seen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his dream. That is not the case. Up until he saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his true form, as he was when he was upon the earth. And for this reason, for this reason, Muhammad ibn Sirin rahimahullah from the Tabi'een. That if anyone ever said to him that I saw the Prophet ﷺ in my dream, he would say to him, describe him to me then. What did you see? What did he look like? What was his height? What was his features like? How was his face? How was his hair? How was his beard? How was his build? And if the person described the Prophet ﷺ as he was when he was upon this earth, then he would say to him, Indeed, you saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And with regard to the examples of the righteous dreams, are those dreams wherein the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is seen, and that is a bushra. That is a bushra. That is a glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa taala that you had the ability that Allah subhanahu wa taala gave you the success to see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his true form. Now that you saw. Someone who said he was the prophet, and when you describe him, he is nothing like the description of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not his height, not his build, not his features, not his complexion. And you saw someone completely different who told you that he was the prophet. You have not seen the prophet. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whomsoever saw me, implying and indicating that you saw him in his true form, then indeed he has seen me. For indeed the shaitan cannot take my form. For in the shait, indeed the shaitan cannot take his form. The hadith in Bukhari, clearly proving that the shaitan cannot take the form of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is why Muhammad ibn Sirin used to say to that person, "Describe what you saw. Then, what did you see?" And there are many examples, my brothers and sisters, of the dreams of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself and the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم around him. And I'll just mention one or two before concluding. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in a hadith in Bukhari that I saw in a dream a black woman with unkempt hair, and she was going out of Medina and settling at Juhfa, what is today known as Juhfa. So then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that I interpret that to mean that the waba. Or the epidemic that was in Medina will be transferred to Juhfa. In a dream, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, in another in another one, he said, "In my dream, I was given a bowl of milk. So I drank that milk to my fill, and I felt the fluid flowing through my body. Then I gave the remainder of that milk to Umar, radiyallahu anhu." So the companions they said 
So how do you interpret that, Ya Rasulullah? So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was knowledge. It was ilm. Meaning that I took it and then I gave a portion of it to Umar. Radiallahu anhu. Abdullah bin Salam, and as you know, Abdullah bin Salam, radiallahu anhu, that he used to be a Jew. From the rabbis, from the greatest of the scholars of the Jews of Medina. Then he came upon the Prophet ﷺ and heard some words. And I looked at his face, he said. And I knew that that was not the face of a liar and he entered into Islam. He had a dream. He said that I saw myself in a dream in a garden. And there was in the middle of the garden a pillar. And at the top of the pillar there was a handhold that you could grab. But I couldn't reach it. So I climbed it. And then I tried to climb, but I couldn't climb. So someone said to me, climb it. And I said, I cannot climb it. Then a servant came up behind me and lifted me by my clothes up until I climbed the pillar. Then I grabbed that handhold and I awoke in that state. I came to the Prophet ﷺ and I said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what I had in, this is what I saw in my dream. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, the garden symbolizes the garden of Islam. And the handhold, the urwa, is the urwatul wuthqa, is the firm handhold of Islam, which indicates that you, Ya Abdullah, that you will be adhering to Islam firmly up until you die. So that was a bushra. A glad tiding for Abdullah bin Salam. Abu Huraira used to, as the hadith mentions in al-Bukhari, that Abu Huraira hated to see a ghul, meaning that he hated to see an iron collar around his neck in a dream. But the people used to love to see their own feet fettered and tied in a dream as it symbolizes one's constant and firm adherence to the deen. As has been narrated by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih. So dreams have interpretations. Some of them don't. Some of them are from the person himself. Some of them are from shaitan. But each and every one of us, my brothers and sisters, we must understand how to, how to when we have these dreams, how to deal with them. And not to imagine... That somehow now that you are receiving wahi from Allah to change the deen of Allah. Like what happened with Juhayman in the Haram in Mecca in 1979. When after a series of dreams in which the shaitan was coming to dozens and dozens of those individuals, if not scores of them. And in their dreams the shaitan would come to them and, said to, and say to them, the Mahdi has arisen. The Mahdi has arisen, and he is your leader. And the, all of them would have the same dreams coming from shaitan, up until the shaitan deceived them into entering into the Kaaba and taking over the Kaaba for nearly 20 days. And after that, how many people were killed? This was not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would not accept the fact that the scholars of that time told them that this dream is not from Allah, it is from shaitan. It is not true. But they would not listen, like you find many of the people today, that they have a dream, and they act upon the dream in contradiction to the kitab and the sunnah. Barakallahu feekum. So understand this affair and understand it well. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.